is a proximity application with National Instruments Compact DAC and LabVIEW. In just a moment, we'll get into how to program this with LabVIEW, but first, I would like to explain our hardware setup. First of all, we have Compact DAC, and we have a C-Series module, which is the NI9401. This is an 8-channel bidirectional high-speed digital I.O. module that's configurable on a per-channel basis for I.O. at 5-volt TCL levels. We're going to be using this to do both our digital input and our output, so that's the only module that we'll need. Our hardware setup consists of a machine that we've built that's going to allow us to sense proximity of a magnet. This magnet will roll down a track and come into proximity of two Hall effect sensors, one located here, one located over here, and we're going to be able to then determine where that magnet is. To power the Hall effect sensors, we've got a battery pack here, and that will give us six volts to each of the Hall effect sensors. When the magnet comes by, those Hall effect sensors will open or close, and then we'll be able to sense the digital value. To actually actuate this track, we would like to roll the magnet backward, so we're using a solenoid that's located right here. When we actuate the solenoid, this track will raise up, and you can see that the magnet will actually roll down the track. That's how we're going to actuate this, is with the solenoid. Now the solenoid is actually controlled or powered by a 12 volt line that's coming in from the back. And the way that we're going to send that 12 volts to the solenoid is through a relay that's located under the base. That relay then is being powered by this 6 volt battery pack and then we go up to the digital input and when that goes low we'll energize the coil which will trip the solenoid and then we'll see the track actuate. So that's our hardware setup. Let's go into LabVIEW and program our application. On the front panel we're going to place two booleans or LEDs and this is going to show us when the magnet comes into proximity with the Hall effect sensor. So we put one on the left and one on the right to indicate our left Hall effect sensor and our right Hall effect sensor. That's our front panel and we're all set and ready to go. So back in the diagram what we're going to do is begin to program. The first thing that we'll do is get a DAC assistant so we'll get this and we'll put it down. And the very first thing we want to do in our program is we want to tilt this track upwards. That's the very first step so that the magnet will roll backwards. We're going to generate a signal to do that, digital output, and then we're going to go to line two. Because in our 9401 on this module right here, we're taking our third digital line, which is digital line two, and that's going to trip our relay and actuate our solenoid. We'll invert the line, and let's actually go and try this out, so we'll run it and confirm that this is functioning. We'll click this button, and you can see that the track actuates. We release it, and we can do that all day. But now that we know it works, we're able to then go and work this and make sure that it functions well. Okay, that's going to generate the code for us, and now we're going to move on to doing our sensing. So the first thing that we would like to do, we'll create a constant here on this and we'll tell it true because this will actuate the track backwards or up in our very first step. Now, to do our sensing, we're going to start with a flat sequence. We're going to want to do some things in order here. So we're going to get a structure called a flat sequence that will let us do one thing first before we do the next thing. We'll get another DAC assistant, and in this case we're going to acquire some signals. So we'll drop this down. We're going to get digital input again we're going to do it as a single line and we're going to choose line zero because line zero on our digital input module is this Hall effect sensor over here. We'll invert the line and we'll say OK and that's going to set up for our monitoring. Now what comes out of this is actually an array of trues and falses and we would like to select just the first one and the reason for this is because you could have a whole port of digital lines. In fact, this has a whole port. So we'd like to go and get our first element, and that's our element zero. So we'll create a constant. It's already set at zero. And then we'll wire that whole information into this array selector. Coming out of there will be our true false, and that'll tell us whether our magnet is nearby or not. What we want to do from this is make a decision. If we do have a true, then we want to tell the solenoid to actuate the track back the other way. So we're going to get a case statement and we'll set it down here and we'll take the true false from the proximity of the magnet and we'll wire that in to control our case. 
Now, if it's true that we have seen the magnet, we want to go and actuate the track back the other way. So we're going to do this again with the DAC assistant. We'll generate signals. This will be digital out. And then we're going to choose a different line. Generate signals, digital output, and we'll choose line number two. We'll invert the line, and we'll say OK. Next, we need to go and create a constant. So in this case, we want to actually go and actuate the track. So we want to lift the track and send the magnet back the other way. So this is our setup to sense the magnet and to actuate the track. Next, what we would like to do is create a second step. So we'll add a frame afterwards. And we're going to copy this entire setup. And we're going to put it as our second step in our flight sequence. So we'll copy this. And we'll drag it in. And what we're going to do is expand our diagram. So you won't be able to see the hardware setup as well. But right now, let's focus on the program. So once we've copied that all, we want to go and change some values to our DAC assistant. So in this case, we don't want to be looking for this Hall effect sensor on the left. We want to look on the right, and that's on digital channel 1. So let's go in here and change this over to line 1. And the way we do this is by changing the physical channel. So we'll just click right, tell it to change the physical channel. And instead of line 0, we want line 1. So we'll say OK there. So that's now going to monitor our second Hall effect sensor. And what we need to do now is we want to send the track back the other way. And the way we do this is by changing this Boolean right here that will say, go ahead and release this and let the track go to its other position. So after this, we would like to wire in our LEDs that indicate on the front panel when the magnet has been sensed. So we're going to put each one of those inside the sequence. And then we'll just wire up our true falses that's coming out of our digital sensing. So we wired the first one, there's the second one, and we're ready to go. The next thing we need to do is put all of this inside a while loop. So we'll expand the diagram just a little bit more so you can see the whole thing. And we'll go get a while loop that we put around everything. This means we're going to run over and over again. So remember the first thing we did was we said tilt the track up so that the magnet would roll. So we've already got that DAC assistant ready to do that. What we'd like to do, though, when the program's done running, is we'd like to release everything. And the way that we're going to release it is by sending out a false to our digital output channel, our digital output line. So we'll copy the DAC assistant. All we need to do here is change the Boolean value from true to false, and that will release the track or put it in its rest position. But we need to do this in the right order. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to use the errors that come out of the DAC assistant to say, first lift the track, then go in and do all of our sensing. And then when we're done doing all of the sensing, what I would like to do is take that and send the error back out and allow the track to be released back to its rest position. So when we wire this in, it will wire over and everything will be set as far as order of execution. So if we do a control U, this all cleans up nicely and you have your program set and ready to go. We're now ready to run our program as soon as we add our control that's going to let us shut the loop off. So now we're ready to run. Let's go back to our front panel. We'll expand this so you can see the hardware set up a little bit more. We'll click the run button. The first thing that will happen is we'll raise the track and it'll begin to sense the magnet. And you can see the magnet rolling up and down the track. Now, it should not actuate if it doesn't find the magnet. And that'll show that it's truly waiting for the magnet to arrive before the proximity sensing then turns the solenoid or the track in the other direction. So if I stop it from rolling, you're going to see that it doesn't actuate the solenoid anymore. So sure enough, it's waiting. And as soon as it gets back down there, it'll resume and take off again. So this is how you could do a proximity application with National Instruments Compact Act, the 9401, and LabVIEW.